Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to talk about two more browsers that are prime candidates for you to switch from Chrome if you're looking for alternatives completely free of all things Chrome or Chromium. If you've watched my videos before, welcome back. If you're new here though, welcome and thanks for stopping by. On this channel, you'll find weekly videos about blockchain, cryptocurrency, and other innovative technologies ranging from easy to understand educational videos to product reviews, internet security and privacy tutorials, and all sorts of good stuff like that. So if that sounds like something that you're into, please do hit that subscribe button along with the bell notification button so you can find out whenever I post new content on the channel. Thank you in advance, and without further ado, let's hash it out. Towards the end of last year, I made a video about three alternatives to Google Chrome. For those of us who are looking to switch because of ads, poor privacy features, the controversial manifest V3 updates that are gonna break ad blockers, or things like that. In that video, I recommended three browsers that I personally use and enjoy. And you can see that video up here in the YouTube card above if you have not yet seen it. But today, I have two more browsers to share with you that I really, really like. And because the theme of the last video was to provide you Chrome alternatives that were similar enough in terms of UI UX, in terms of features, in terms of the feel of the browser, I wanted to suggest browsers that are based on the open source Chromium framework and the Google Blink rendering engine in that video. There were a lot of people that commented in that video, of course, that they wanted a video about other browsers that don't use Chromium in the first place. So one topic that needs to be addressed is that homogeneity in browsers. There are so many browsers that use the open source framework behind Google Chrome, Chromium, and the Blink rendering engine. And while it doesn't mean these browsers that use that engine are Chrome, it means that there's very little competition in the browser space. Quite frankly, the two browsers that I'm going to talk about today are two of the only ones that I can think of off the top of my head that really compete with Chrome in any way, shape, or form. So today I have two browsers that are not Chromium based and the obvious first choice is the tried and true Mozilla Firefox. Mozilla Firefox was developed and released in 2002 as an open source browser project, really as the child project of the original Netscape browser, which is thought of as the moment that brought the internet to the mainstream. Instead of using the Blink engine and the Chromium framework, Firefox uses the in-house Gecko rendering engine which is buttery smooth in my experience, and it's built by Mozilla themselves. As a general rule of thumb, Firefox is also designed for privacy and security first. If you go on their website, there's a ton of talk about privacy and security. When you open up the browser the first time, it gives you a page open that talks about their privacy perspective and how they handle your data. I love that, transparency is awesome. And following closely behind security and privacy, there is a plethora of customizable features within the browser itself. So speaking of those customizable features, pretty much every UI element and option can be customized in terms of the location. You can move things around and there are a ton of color themes and such. And for people who like dark mode, like myself, there is a dark mode in Firefox, which I really enjoy. Chrome, in my opinion, is really lacking in this regard. There's not a lot of customization available in the browser and you can hack it a little bit if you know your way around it in the background, but quite frankly, it's just not enough. And most of the browsers that use the Chromium open source framework also suffer from this. In terms of security and privacy though, there is a fair bit to unpack, so I'm gonna go at a really high level. First and foremost, Firefox has the normal bells and whistles like pop-up blockers, HTTPS warnings, automatic updates, at a large and high frequency, which is highly necessary. You want your browser always to be up to date with the latest patches. Don't let it sit there unupdated for a long period of time. And finally, they have a continuously improved and upgraded customizable tracker blocking feature built in that you can pick and choose what works for you and your browsing habits. Privacy wise, Firefox doesn't collect your information in mass in the cloud when they do cross device sync. So that's obviously a positive sign and any data they do collect is for development purposes or for performance purposes. And they're very clear about what they collect and very clear about how they protect it and when they delete it and all that sort of thing. So these are all good things. And Firefox is a fantastic browser. In fact, it's the competitor for Google Chrome that doesn't use the Chromium framework. In my opinion, it is the only competitor from that perspective. 
And in terms of performance, Firefox is quite efficient, especially under heavy load. Although I did notice that the RAM usage when it's with one tab open, there's not a lot going on, is a little high. But then as you scale it up and you start working more, it's awesome. So maybe that's just something that happens on my computer. I've had some tests go wonky on me like that, but just letting you know what I saw. There are, however, some things that I don't love. And the first is that Firefox's password syncing app Lockwise doesn't really work that well. And I don't understand why it's not integrated into their standard mobile app rather than being a standalone app itself. And I'm also not a huge fan of the fact that the default setting for DNS over HTTPS or DOH is set to on without queuing the user to say, do you want this on or not? I think most people don't really know what it is or care but it really routes your traffic to another centralized entity like Cloudflare under the guise of a privacy improvement. And while this might have a benefit in terms of privacy, if there were more than just one or two partners providing DNS over HTTPS, then I'd say yes, but I think this one should be queued up when you log into the browser the first time to say, hey, do you want this on? Just my opinion. And then finally, the mobile version of Firefox is not quite up to snuff compared to where I want it to be but these are just my personal opinions, so take them with a grain of salt. Now, number two on this list is Ice Dragon, which was developed by the ubiquitous security firm Komodo. You may have heard of Komodo if you know anything about SSL certificates, and as you might be able to guess, the focus of Ice Dragon, the browser, is to be a secure browser, puts up the necessary guardrails so you don't careen into the world of malware, phishing, and all of the like. With features native to Komodo's offering, Ice Dragon, touts integrated web page scanning using their own plugin. I think you can get that plugin on Firefox. So to that point, you could probably get this functionality in Firefox, but it also has default blocking of known phishing and spyware sites. It has a integrated secure DNS system to resolve domains within the browser. And there's also a plethora of tracker blocking and ad blocking features at your disposal if you so choose to use them. So you can customize these things in options. If you're into social media, it has this really cool drag and drop feature where you can drag content from into a, I guess, an extension or into the menu bar and automatically share it to socials. I think Facebook and LinkedIn are definitely supported. I don't use it, but I've heard people like it. To be honest, Ice Dragon is very much so a clone of Firefox, which some extra features built on top of it. And this also means that it natively supports Firefox extensions as well. And from a UX UI perspective, it's pretty much exactly the same. So it doesn't feel like a Windows 98 browser like some of the other ones do. And it's gonna have all the features that you're really used to. Two things to note though, when installing this browser, make sure you do so from Komodo's site only. Don't go on CNET or some other website and make sure to uncheck the box when it asks you to install Komodo's antivirus if it does ask you. I personally installed it again today to check and it didn't cue me and didn't ask me and it didn't install anything else but just make sure you're aware. And then secondly, this is a Windows only browser. So Mac and Linux are out of luck here, but it's also a 100% second choice to Firefox, which is available cross platform. If I had to pick between the two, I'd pick Firefox every single day of the week. These two browsers though, are keeping the torch lit for non Chromium browsers out there on the market today with Microsoft Edge moving towards Chromium. Actually, they just launched their Chromium browser and Safari rumored to be moving that way as well. Firefox and its related open source projects may soon be the only remaining browsers that don't use Google's engine and frameworks. To be honest with you, as someone who loves technology, that's not something we want. Monopolization of technology is not something we want. I like standards. I like commonly shared ideas. I like when open source stuff is created, but not when it dominates everything. And despite some of my trepidation with the moves that Mozilla's made with Firefox, in some cases like DNS over HTTPS in some cases, the reason enough to keep supporting them is that they are one of the browsers that's out there that's really going up against Chrome and I have immense respect for that. So hats off to Firefox and the Mozilla team behind it. I really do like Firefox and this year I'm gonna give it a try as my secondary. I'm gonna kick Opera to the curb and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's been a week now using Firefox instead of Opera as my secondary. As always though, guys, do not forget to check out some more of my content, which I will link up right here and right here somewhere on the screen. And I wanna wish you a fantastic rest of your week. 
slash weekend and give you a big thank you for watching. Cheers. Cheers.